have I got a treat for you guys today, and maybe this is actually a treat for me. I bought a guitar. This is a 10 top custom 24, and it has a rosewood neck on it. Oh yeah. So this was an upgrade for several years. I don't think they make them like this unless it's a special order now. And uh, there's something really unique about these rosewood necks. Thus, I bought them. This guitar uh, has been toured and played and it's off the road now and it's mine. So we're going to adjust a couple things. The original owner swapped out the pickup surrounds and the new owner would like to have the original white ones put back on. This one's got a little spookus on it. We'll take care of that. It's been swapped out to black tuners. I kind of like those. So we'll let those go, but uh, it's playing really well. The action is fantastic on this one. Let's just give her a quick read. And we're right at four and four and four, which I prefer my action a little bit higher uh, on the treble strings. I've got big hands <laughs> and uh, I want the strings to hit sort of the middle of the pads of my fingers. And when I have lower action, I, I wind up kind of not on the tips of my fingers, but on the flats of my fingers. And in order to, to play them, I have to curl my hands. This is probably where I am going to leave it, but I think it's been blocked. I can see the evidence of that around the backside there. So the first thing I wanna do is take off our cover back here. What we hope for is that they didn't just absolutely glue the bejesus out of them. He's got it blocked on both sides of the trim, so those are in there good. Oh, Lord Almighty. Mm. Can you see that? I got my pinky in there. Just grabbing the bottom of that block. There we go. Do this so we don't get, uh, yep. Yeah. Put one of my trim wedge blocks in there. Let's do the stab method. Oh yeah, come on baby. Come on, <laughs> come on out. Being very careful here. There we go, there we go, now we got it. I've loosened the claw there, the claw, the spring claw, so that string tension is taking over. And if you can see, the bridge is just slightly off the body. So that's where I've got my trim wedge in the back here. And basically you can push it down or pull it up and to the notch that makes your bridge sit right where you want it to. So that's where I've got it set. And again, this will tune just like a hardtail at this point. Because the additional tension that we're putting on the strings cannot pull our tremolo any further forward because we've got it blocked in the back. So this is the magic to setting up a floating bridge. Paul and the guys at PRS will tell you that somewhere around 10 thousandths is the right number. I will tell you that somewhere around 12 is the right for me. This is just a little bit high. I'm gonna say we're probably at 14 thou right now. Maybe even just a little bit higher than that. So we need to tighten the truss rod just, a, I mean, it's close there. When I bought this guitar a couple weeks ago, it had this truss rod cover on it. Oops, there we go. And uh, I don't know, it looks like something out of the, <laughs> out of the 80s. So I had this one made and uh, I love the private stock logo. This is not a private stock guitar, it's a 10 top, not private stock, but I love that logo and it just says PRS. And so I had it made for me, a guy out of Canada, I think he's out of Canada, WEC inlays. If you guys need any custom inlay work done, whether it's a truss rod cover like this one or it's something else, this guy is phenomenal. Uh, it just took him a couple days to make this and ship it to me. Very reasonably priced. We have to tighten everything up, right? So we're going to release the tension off the neck. 
And these phase three tuners are pretty cool. I am a PRS fanboy. I will just get that out of the way right now. So you can make your jokes and do whatever else. I think Paul is just doing amazing things with his crew up there. It's not just Paul, it's everybody involved. I know one of their designers and uh, their CEO, Jack, is a phenomenal guy. So this truss rod's turning, turning well. So we're gonna give it one, two, and let me grab a straight edge. This is my least used straight edge in the bunch. And it's got both PRS. Wait, you hear that rock? Um, it's got a little back bow in it, which is funny. Maybe I adjusted it too much. Let's see, let's put it back. Let's just get it flat and then we'll see where we go from there. Okay, I did, I adjusted it too much. That's pretty well flat. We'll go with that and I'm gonna put that way out of my reach because I don't want it scratching the guitar. We'll tune it back to pitch. Let's see where we're at. And we are too tight for sure. So let's loosen it off. And you can loosen these off under string tension. So we're just gonna make a slight adjustment there. And see, generally, still too tight. A little bit bigger of an adjustment there. So this guitar lived its life in C sharp tuning before I got a hold of it. Still just a little bit tight. We'll do that and then we'll tune it to pitch and see. Yeah, it's just about right there. So let's tune it to pitch. And again, just holding down right where the body meets. It's the 23rd fret on this guitar. Now, now we're in business and that is just, just buttery at 12 thousandths. Again, I am the client on this one, so we're adjusting it to my specifications, which is always kind of fun. Um, I recommend specs to a lot of people, but I do like to watch the way they play just to see, just to see um, if there's something I would change. Some people are very light players. Some people are heavy handed like I am. So now we are at 464 and 464 so our string height has not really changed which is good um, we've checked neck relief we've checked string height now let's check our first fret um, first fret height so our nut string action if you will so that's 22 thou and it's a little tight let's look at 20 20 is just bang on and then let's look at the treble side. That 18 is just, maybe just a tick tight. This is 14, I don't have my 16 out here. 14 slides through, so it's probably 17 thousandths. Let's just check intonation before we peel these strings off of here. Get it tuned. Little bit flat. Little flat. Flat. Bang on. Little bit flat. So flat, 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 good, flat, good. Let's start with the E so it's flat. We need to make the string shorter. So we're gonna let this screw out just a tick. Just like that right there. Still flat. I like to just make small adjustments on these, sneak up on it, you know. So we'll make it just a little bit shorter again. 
really close. A little bit shorter and we'll have it. And you can actually adjust things sharp under string tension. I just prefer not to do it sometimes. That's bang on. So this one was also flat. So we'll give it a couple turns, just like we did the last one. And visually, I'm looking at where the E was and getting it pretty close, I think. Yep, good guess. So we can do the same on this one. There we go. Intonation set. Take off these pickup surrounds and swap them out. Just cool to see inside that pickup cavity there. Yeah. See the rosewood coming all the way back in there. PRS has a dovetail style neck joint. So it's always cool to see how that's executed. And then these are just humbucker setups here. So I'm going to loosen both of these screws and then we'll pop off the cover, put the new ones on. So we'll set it with the angle in the back. I'll put that one there just to remind me. And uh, so it'll go screw through the hole. Spring, if I can get the spring in my hands. Spring and then into Z pickup. Let's see if we can find a hole here, guys. Yeah, we'll stand it on end. We could definitely cut a few coils off those springs. That would help. Come on, baby. All right. I think we're better now. Put the screws back in. I'll do the second one just the same, and I'll bring you guys back. Kind of cool to see the original tag there. This is what they use at the factory to tell them exactly what goes into this guitar. So all of those little numbers there tell them uh, what what's going on. I, they call it a cat or something like that. I can't remember. But anyway, it looks like it was built on August 26th, 11. A little Zippo lighter fluid there. It's hard to find... The right stuff now, you can find lighter fluid, but it doesn't have the good stuff in it all the time. So you really have to read the labels to make sure you get what you're looking for. And uh, yeah, there's some years of finger plaque in here. Some DNA, heavy DNA. The question is, do you oil just the fretboard or do you oil the entire neck on a rosewood neck and I can tell you what my answer is going to be is that we're going to oil both because we want this guitar to be looking sweet from now to eternity and there is no finish on the back of the neck and it's an open poured wood species so oil is not a bad thing for rosewood that's been my life experience with rosewood is that it does like oil so i'm just gonna put a dab on my cloth here and we're just gonna rub it like that right there yep The end grain that gets exposed here on the sides is probably the thirstiest. This is a rub on, take it right back off situation. We're not trying to build a film up here. We're just trying to get some oil into the pores of this guitar neck. Number 10, Slinkies. What's going on this guitar today? So there is a little controversy about whether or not with locking tuners 
you need to wrap the strings around the post at all. And I would tell you, by the way, I always look a little goofy when I'm doing these three and three headstocks. Um, Left-handed, <laughs> backwards here, kind of strange. But I always like a little break angle, so um, I do allow I do allow for a few wraps even on even on a locking tuner. So call me weird. It doesn't hurt anything to do it, and uh, like I said, I think it just gives you a little bit more pressure on the back side of the nut. So I like to do it. And I just, I sort of just pick up my ring finger there. That's how I get the right amount of length, if you will, for the wraps. And I don't know, we can argue in the comments maybe. Do you like the wraps? Do you not like the wraps? And uh, as soon as we get a little string tension on here, we'll put our block in the back. Now, our bridge, if you can see, is coming off the guitar. So, when we put our block in, it will actually pull it back a little bit. And we want it just off the body. Can you see that? We're just off the body. So, I can actually push that down just a little bit. So, it'll have just a tick of backwards <laughs> uh, ability, but it'll be mostly dive bomb yeah baby okay now new strings on here who knows what he had on before oh baby that's sweet at 12 thousandths 12th fret we're sitting right at four and four still so we're right where we want to be now we're going to turn our attention to the back here Normally on Strat scale length Floyd Rose guitars, I see three springs, standard tension springs. These all look like standard tension. These are mine. I make a um, less noisy spring. We put a coating on them that helps to dull the ring that you get. And again, you know, playing acoustically in your house, you can definitely tell it, but uh, out on a big stage, a lot of times you can really tell the difference between a uh, quiet coil is what we call ours, a quiet coil versus the uncoated coils. They just don't have an, as much reverb in the guitar itself. Some people do like that old kind of sound. I would rather control my reverb through my amplifier than have it coming through my guitar. That's a personal preference. Got a bunch of different springs. I've got standard tension springs and I've got heavy duty ones like these and I've got light as well. So you can see that makes that almost want to move. It's probably pretty darn close though. That feels good there. Let's see if we're in tune. Just a little sharp. So I'm going to loosen the screws just a wee bit. If I can get a hold of this other one. Oh man, yeah baby. So, let's go through just one more time now that we have new strings on it. And by the way, I stretched off camera. You guys don't need to see the inchworm. Let's grab our 12 thousandths feeler gauge, grab it at the body joint there. Still just sweet. String height four and whoops, let's take this thing off. It's still at four, surprisingly enough. Four and four. So we're golden there. Intonation. We can check in the playing position. 
we'll get our tuning just right. Yep. Yep. Man, that sounds good. Hitting the pickup. Get that out of the way. For those who don't know about the Custom 24, two humbuckers, but they both coil split or tap, however you want to say it. I don't know exactly which way these guys go, but all the way back is your bridge humbucker. This is a uh, bridge single coil, both humbuckers, neck single coil, and then neck humbucker. So really interesting variety of sounds on a single guitar. convincing. <laughs> Happy to add this one to the collection. Thanks everybody for joining along today and doing a little guitar work with me. Take care. If you would like more guitar related content, click that subscribe button. And as always, visit skyscraperguitars.com for guitar tools and accessories.